The Women Conquer Business Show is an educational how-to women in business podcast that features stories, marketing news, and real-life experiences from fun and friendly hosts, Jen McFarland and Shelly Carney. Join us as we dive into the details so you can slay marketing overwhelm, streamline processes, and amplify your impact. You'll learn strategies and tactics, leadership skills, and practical advice from successful women entrepreneurs to help you grow, nurture, and sustain your business. Hello, and welcome to Women Conquer Business. I'm your host for today, Shelly Carney, and my uh, esteemed guest is here to help us to learn about your DIY in-home video recording studio. This is Toby Eunice. Hi. I was going to tell you I'm not Jen, but that's obvious. Jen yeah. is on vacation in a yurt, so we are uh, filling in. Yeah, we're filling in. Jen asked, so, um, and she made me promise I wouldn't do any mansplaining, so I'm going to try and do that. Yeah, that's, a, that's right. <laughs> so we're going to start with, uh, well, what's up? I'm, what's up with you? No, no, no. What's up, what's with, up with you? Because you got a whole <laughs> bunch of up with you going on. Okay. So let's, uh, let's tell the audience about that. So I uh, went to visit my mom last week, and uh, she's in a nursing home recovering from a stroke. So I've decided that I'm going to go back, and in order to be able to do my work while I'm there. We're going to have to set up a home studio in my mom's house uh, for me to be able to do my shows and my work. And uh, we pretty much have to start from the bottom up because they're currently not, they don't have high speed internet. So we'll have to get that installed. And then we need all the equipment that we're going to need for the uh, home studio. So we'll be taking short clips of video and uh, pictures and sharing all of that on our channel messages and mm -hmm. methods as yeah. we put that together and and it'll be a nice opportunity for people to see what you can do starting with you know just a desk in a bedroom and and how you can create a home studio like in in your home with just a few pieces of equipment and i think it's important to mention also that it's not just so that uh, shelly and i can do our programming for the next couple of months because that's how long she expects to stay with her mom in arizona but it's also for her mom uh because she's going to be limited in her ability to travel uh and it's even going to be hard for her to be able to get into a car to visit her doctor so while shelly's there she's going to introduce her mom and her dad uh into the technology so that they will be able to use it consistently from that point forward so that they can a visit with family b uh visit with a doctor so that she doesn't have to travel she can have their her appointments with them uh via tele video communication so it has a lot of practical purposes and usage and we're looking forward to the installation so it'll require a weekend but that's i don't think that's a big deal for us yeah and we're hoping to go next weekend if all goes well and the internet gets put in Oh, that's right. We have to we have to get that installed before we do anything else. Yeah. So we've yeah. got a big package of things ordered uh, on Amazon, listed on Amazon, and um, we're going to order them as soon as we finish this show today. And we have Nikki Sargent in the room. Thank you, Nikki, for your well wishes. And I do believe that every positive thought sent my way and to my mom is helping her to heal. So thank you for that. And if you're watching this and you want to send your healing thoughts and your positive vibes her way, then um, I appreciate that. Her name is Marlis, and she's in uh, Chandler, Arizona right now. So I appreciate that. So my mother passed away in uh, 2013, so she's always been kind of a substitute mom for me. And um, plus, I love her. I love her for a lot of reasons, but I love her because she plays a great game of cards. She knows all the card games from... I, I don't think she plays poker, right? No. No, but she plays all the you know, hearts and spades. And she played games that I hadn't even heard of. Uh, the one Pinochle thing that's... and Canasta. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. The one them. thing that uh, was consistent uh, amongst them all was uh, she beat me every time. <laughs> me and everybody else. For that yeah, matter, she's... So. We're working with her. We're playing Uno with her. And she can play solitaire. Um, oh, good. With some help because yeah. she's only got the use of one hand right now. Yeah, we're really looking forward to this installation. We've done others installate. We've done other installations for other clients mostly, uh, but this one's going to be special. And we're really looking forward to it, and it's a nice little, you know, long weekend vacation for us as well. 
So do we have a breaking news sound? Or did you I do have a breaking news. No, it's all you. <laughs> breaking news. Awesome. Uh, so you can share that screen with them of the watching podcasts, YouTube edges out Spotify. This one here? Mm-hmm. Let me share that. Uh, for this spring's podcast download report, Cumulus Media and Signal Hill Insights decided to include consumers who watch rather than just listen. Factoring in video-first audiences reveals quite a shift, at least in this study. YouTube, by a nose, is now the most used podcasting platform in the U.S. 10% of respondents said they only watched podcasts in the last week, and 60% of weekly consumers, audio and video, said they prefer podcasts with video. Podcast watchers are younger and are likely to be new to the medium. The report also highlights the eyes on advertising attentiveness of podcast watchers. At uh, YouTube's Upfront in New York, the company announced a new ad frequency capping solution for brands using Google Ads. This could be good news for podcasters already wary of overloading new fans. So basically, this is what you want, why you want to watch today's show. If you want to do a podcast, video first podcasts are winning over audio only podcasts. And there are many reasons for that. People uh, have different ways of learning and consuming media. And if they can watch a video, uh, you can do more because you can demonstrate things, uh, pictures and, vi you know, you can show, we're going to show today, we're going to show a couple of examples of home studio setups. And it's much easier to be able to see them on video than to just hear about it. We'll try to describe it for the podcast audience, but we would encourage the podcast audience to take a look at the video so they can get some ideas about how to set up their own office space. So a couple of things. About six months ago, YouTube announced that they um, appointed a whatever level, I'll call it vice president level of podcasting. Uh, indicating that they had a great deal of interest in it. They were already experiencing, they, they mentioned how many podcasters they had on YouTube. So it didn't surprise me. I think the thing that they have to overcome, and it, and it is visual and, and it does help. And I'm a, I know because I'm a visual learner, I have to see it. If, if I, I do listen to podcasts, but they're not uh, learning podcasts, they're informational in a lot of different areas that I have interests. But the other thing that I think they have to overcome somehow is that one of the benefits of podcasting, of, of listening to podcasts, is uh, that they are mobile. So I can download it to my smartphone and I can listen to it when I'm doing my workout or driving or whatever. Uh, that's more difficult when you have to look at the screen in order to gain the benefit of it. So um, I think what they have to do is resolve kind of that issue. And the reason is it's a, they don't allow, YouTube doesn't allow you to download uh, YouTube videos unless you're part of its YouTube premium um, and you pay a monthly fee and then you can download them. But again, you know, it's hard when you're going for a walk or a bike ride to watch a video. It's easier to listen to something. So uh, I think eventually what I expect to see is that if they do go the pod, you know, if they start focusing on podcasts, that podcast, they will enable the download of the audio track of the podcast so that you can have, so you can maintain that uh, element of mobility. In it. Or at least that you can continue to listen when you turn off the screen on your phone. Right. And exactly. You because you can't like, do that. Need to have the internet for the entire thing because, you know, you can go in and out of service when you're on a walk or drive well, or whatever. It, it, and that's the other thing too about downloading it is the expectation is that you may be used listening to it using the podcast uh, in an area that doesn't have uh, service. And for some people, um, it gets difficult because they are still charged. There's, they still have billing by the amount of uh, data they use. Yeah. Data they use. So, or it slows down after a certain number. Yeah. Exactly. So um, they, they've got to resolve a couple of minor things. I don't think they're big and I think they're easy decisions, but it's YouTube. Yeah. So yeah, they never it's make coming. It. Yeah. So definitely think about uh, video first podcasting if you're interested in starting a podcast. Oh, I think that was it for our breaking news. Um, let's go ahead and get into our training. Do you have the training sound? I do have the training sound. Uh, let's see. There are different buttons for me. That's right. Um, so what do you want to do first? Let's do their slides. Okay. 
So today we're talking about the minimum live cast setup. This is DIY, do it yourself, set it up in your own space, in your own home, and you'll be able to live stream video, you'll be able to podcast and do all your work in the studio. And I think we wanna make it clear that this for us is uh, the manner in which we make a living. So we've invested a lot more than you have to in our studio just because it makes it convenient. We have you know, some requirements that not everyone has. So uh, we are at the, do you wanna do the video at the end? We'll do it probably part way through. As okay. We're... So we're going to show you our studio. I actually made a short recording of our studio so you can see it. But our expectation is that not any everyone has A, the space, B, wants to make that kind of investment. They're not going to make a living out of it. Uh, and C, would just like to be able to do what is absolutely necessary in terms of time, uh, effort, and equipment in order to get do, do a credible job of getting online. And I can tell you that... Um, one of the things that you'll learn quickly is I'm going to say 40, 50 percent of how you look online is going to be what you do for lighting. So we're going to spend a little bit more time with that. OK. <clears throat> so our agenda for today is to talk about the minimum setup, and this is to get you started, but to still look professional. What you're going to need is a high speed Internet connection. You'll need computer hardware. Uh, the studio equipment, which is, you know, the things like the microphone and the headset applications, which is going to help you to get online and uh, do everything in, an, in a simple way. Uh, and then, of course, what to say for when you're ready to move up to the next level. For your Internet connection, you want to find a reliable provider. Uh, you should be able to find that in your area, you know, uh, Ask your neighbors if you don't have any internet in your home. Ask what they have. <laughs> if you, uh, if you're not getting, uh, you know, good quality, uh, reliable internet, then talk to your provider. See if they can improve it or find a new provider uh, if that's available to you in your area. We use Xfinity. We have one gigabyte service, and the minimum requirements for live streaming are written on the screen here and i'm gonna let toby tell you what they are because i'm not sure what all those things stand for so down at the bottom i should have put this uh, someplace uh, closer to the top it says tested at speedtest.net if you go to speedtest.net you'll have a big green button it'll start it and it'll give you all the statistics on whatever service you're using uh so the minimum requirements that you want are right here you'll see the ping and that's the signal that goes between you and your uh, server provider, not the service, but the server provider to see how long it takes to ping one another. Uh, the minimum is uh, 10 milliseconds. As so you it should see. be 10 or less. 10 or less, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, and five megabytes upload because live streaming is all about upload. If you can get 10 out of it, if the service provides 10, um, that's great, and five megabytes download. But the more important of the two is the uh, upload. Now you can see, again, because we're using, I think this was our one gigabyte service. Uh, it's a 472 megabyte download and a 41.89 megabyte upload. Uh, traditionally, upload will always be lower than download because they expect that people are gonna be using it for uh, viewing media, watching television, uh, watching YouTube videos. So they always make it higher. I've never understood quite why that's necessary, but uh, your upload speed will always be higher. I'm sorry, your download speed will always be higher than your upload. But these are minimums. Um, and as Shelly said, we use a one gigabyte Comcast service because, you know, for us, it's a significant investment. That's um, I'm, I'm going to tell you how much we pay. It is $99 a month. You don't have to pay anywhere near that. They will have programs for you starting at around 29. Uh, I've seen one recently for 19. Um, and if you have access to a cable service provider, I strongly recommend using a cable service provider over the other options like DSL. Uh, it's just more consistent. Yes, they do have their bad moments where the system goes down, but it seems to be usually at three o'clock in the morning and it's for 10, 15 minutes at most. So uh, we do like yeah, it a lot. Maybe once or twice a year, you'll have an outage and it's usually do, due to something like uh, construction or uh, something of that nature. So it's uh, it's very, very infrequent that, that you'll lose internet. Yeah, and it's not affected by the weather. 
So it's their ground lines. They're actually hard lines. So unless you're way out in the boonies, uh, in which case uh, you may not have access to something like this. Well, there. If you're out in the boonies, there are satellite services that are provided, and we all know that um, uh, Mr. Uh, Musk from uh, Tesla, Mr. Musk of Tesla fame, is putting up Starlink, uh, which is a satellite-based system that he claims high performance. Um, when I was living in Boyce, Virginia, I was pretty much out in the boonies and I used a satellite service then and it was slow and unpredictable. But uh, apparently the Starlink service will uh, resolve some of those issues. And I think he's got it priced at a reason. It's not going to be hundreds of dollars a month. Uh, he's got it priced reasonably. So if that uh, that's, uh, you know, if if you're literally out in the boonies, eventually you'll have service as well. As well. Next is computer hardware. Uh, you can start with either a laptop or a desktop computer. If you do not have either one, I personally prefer the desktop unless for some reason you need to take it with you places. Uh, if you can have a setup desk in your home that you're not going to move around, then I would go for the desktop. You can usually get a higher performance machine for a lower cost when you do that. Uh, but if you already have a laptop that you like, then that will work as well. Uh, you want the most current version of the Mac operating system or the Windows operating system, along with a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM. You'll need audio and input ports, and you can test it uh, to find out what your speeds are and what your uh, c capabilities are. Is that right. right? If you go to cpux.net, um, you can uh, test your system. So That's cpux.net. Oh, right. I forget that we turned this into a podcast. Um, you can go and it will test your computer. And what you're looking for is uh, your points and your uh, initial rank. And it'll tell you where you stand. And up here, you can see I posted the rank for uh, the computer that we're using. It was uh, Its rank is 21,000 of 185,000 tested that day. Uh, and the clock speed is 335 hertz. So you're looking for something under 1,000 hertz. That'll be plenty. We do have a high performance uh, desktop computer in here. Uh, the ports that you'll actually need, you'll need at least one USB port. Uh, if you decide to plug in a camera, you'll need at least one HDMI port in case you decide to uh, plug in an extra monitor. And you'll need, and most laptops especially, will have the single port for both audio. They'll have a TRRS uh, connection for uh, headset with microphone. And we strongly recommend using the headset with microphone as opposed to uh, separate uh, objects. All right. Keep so, it simple. Keep it simple. And uh, for your studio, you want to consider the location. Uh, we recommend if you're having it in your home, find the quietest room in your home that's available to you. And you don't need an entire room. You just need maybe one part of one wall uh, to in a place to set up your desk top. Uh, you're going to need your computer there and your lights. Um, uh, also in your studio, you're going to want your camera and your headphone and microphone uh, as part of your setup. And we have some pictures to show about that. Yes. Okay. We do. Well, we have the video of ours. And oh, okay. Picture right. of Jen's on <clears throat> studio do you know where it is you didn't i didn't actually tell if me you where. go to jen's website yeah women to conquer biz and go to tools uh, okay then you will um scroll down until you see the picture of her office oh thank you to scroll down scroll down there it is there it is so we can share that on the screen now oh you know, that's very interesting because you could almost envision that when she's on screen. Mm -hmm. You want to share it on the screen? Yeah. All right. So this is Jen's office setup. She has uh, ring lights. Uh, she has a riser under her laptop so that her camera on her laptop can be used at the angle that will be at her eye level. But you can also see behind the, the uh, laptop, she has a tripod or a light stand with a uh, webcam on it. A clamp, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can see she's got her her headset, and she uses a separate mic. Her mic is sitting next to the headset. And, of course, she has her keyboard and mouse pad all set up. 
She can use lighting from the windows or she can draw that curtain across if the lighting uh, was not correct for what she wanted and then just use the ring lights. So we recommend having lights in the studio regardless of its size rather than relying on window light uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, window light tends to be very blue in the daylight. Uh, number two, it limits you, since there's only window light in the daytime, it limits you to uh, the time that you can actually do a uh, podcast. Uh, and number three, it's unpredictable. If you have a bad day, and I think she lives in or Portland. Portland. So Portland is not exactly the sunniest city in the world. <laughs> Uh, so you may have a one day where you got clouds and things like that. It may not produce enough light. But uh, generally speaking, the lights that she's using there are very inexpensive. I also know she has her own gimbal. Yeah, back. right. So she's she uh, likes the gadgets. Yeah, just she like does. You. Yeah, she does. So it's a very nice and easy setup, and you don't need a lot. It's very wise if you decide to use the camera on the frame of the laptop to use a riser as she has underneath, so that you get it to eye level. And we can show our video yeah, now of our office. You want to? Mm -hmm. Let me take this out first. And then we're going to, this is a, a video that I did of our office. So our, our studio, which happens to be in one of the bedrooms in my house. Hey, everybody. This is Toby Eunice, and I wanted to share our studio with you. Uh, this studio uh, started out its life as one of the bedrooms in my house, but because I live alone and I only need one guest bedroom, I turned this one into our studio. First thing that you'll notice, of course, are the lights. Those are two um, CFLs, compact fluorescent lights, 125 watts each. They run about $30, but they have a mean time between failure of about 5,000 hours. Uh, those are the original ones that I installed, and they're uh, still here. Uh, in addition to that, I have a second set on the ceiling uh, same wattage, same bulbs, and then I had my son, Jason, who's a metalsmith, build the reflectors around them. And the reason we need that is because we have a, the wall here is painted green. Uh, that's our own green screen, so we don't have to put it up each time. There is a window there, but we have it covered in thick, dense, dark uh, curtains. Um, so behind this, uh, you'll see that there are two audio or, or studio monitors. We use those when we're listening to things that we don't want to have our headsets on. That small printer back there is to print uh, uh, shipping labels. We use Pirate Ship to ship, and that prints the labels for us. We have three monitors, uh, one that's right in front of Shelly's seat, one that is the control monitor where I am, and then I have a third one over here that's a touch screen, a, a ViewSonic touch screen. So if I want to share things with you and I want to make them bigger on the screen and things like that, uh, I can do that. We do have two tables. They're made by Husky and I purchased them from um, uh, Home Depot. Uh, the nice thing about them is they're very sturdy. They have a metal base uh, and wheels, as you can see down there. But what's really cool about them is they both have these handles that enable us to raise them as high as standing height or as low as seated height. Our headphones are Audio-Technica BHPS1s. There is, they don't sell these anymore. There is a new version now to BHPS2. We haven't had to buy it because we're happy with these. They do everything we need. They're very good microphones, very good headsets. They're designed to be used by sports broadcasters. So they, um, they block out a lot of ambient noise. This is my favorite toy. It's a Rodecaster Pro. Uh, we've had it now for about three and a half years. And um, it's, the nice thing about it is it's digital. So we get regular updates from Rodecaster that in, uh, provide improvements and additional features. Uh, and we just love it. I just love it. Um, I, I, I don't, it, it's just the best uh, component for producing quality audio that you can own. Uh, we do have an iPad that we use for monitoring the stream when it's out. That sits in front of us. Uh, the keyboard and wireless are Logitech. I'm, I'm sorry, the keyboard and mouse are wireless from Logitech. Uh, did I tell you our cameras? So we have two Logitech cameras, one in front of us. They're both Logitech 922s. And there's one there that points at us. And then another one here that's kind of stood up right now. Uh, I'll uh, turn it over 90 degrees so that it points down to the table. And that way, if I want to share anything on the desktop with you, I can. That's our little desk. And back there is a Canon color laser printer. So uh, I'm terrible at collecting my wires. You can see that back there. Uh, that's our desktop computer and our one gigabyte um, uh, cable modem. So... 
I think that's it. If there's any questions you have, please ask them in the chat and I will try to answer them. Uh, we've, you know, we've had this studio now since I moved here basically three years ago. And so we've gone through a lot to get it to this point and we can, we can tell you why we've done what we've done. All right. Thanks. Okay, so that's our studio that we're sitting in right now. So of course, it looks like we're sitting in this beautiful home in a beautiful living room. But that's just a green screen. And uh, which is nice, you know, when you have a green screen, you have a lot of options, you can choose whatever kind of a background that you like, uh, according to whatever the presentation or zoom call or uh, mastermind or whatever it is that you're presenting whatever that's about you can reflect that in your uh, background when you have a green screen but it isn't necessary to start there so let's move ahead with uh, equipment so again the location uh, we suggest a quiet space uh, minimize the window lighting so that you don't have it changing or shining on your face or offering two different colors to your face. Avoid uh, backlighting. That means don't sit in front of a window and have it dark in front of you because then you turn into a silhouette. Don't do that. So you want light on your face, uh, not coming from behind you towards the camera. Keep it uncluttered so that when you walk into your space, you feel like you can get right to work and you don't have to tidy everything every time uh, or move piles of laundry or move your exercise bike or whatever it is try to get that space dedicated to shooting your videos because then you'll have that much less friction to get right into it uh, you want an unobtrusive background that just means you don't want a bunch of clutter or and I've noticed sometimes when you have even when you have a bookshelf in the back people are so busy looking at what your books are uh, they forget to listen to you so just unobtrusive is good a fairly plain wall maybe a piece of art uh, on the background that would be you know something that would represent you a uh, large enough desk that you're not knocking things over when you're trying to get set up and uh, we we both prefer at least two monitors uh, when we're doing presentations and live streaming. It just keeps everything right in front of us. We can always see what we need and uh, share those screens with you very easily. And uh, lastly, a uh, comfortable, quiet chair. My chair at home is a little bit squeaky and I need to get the WD-40 on it. Um, and people can notice when you're doing that. And also if you have a chair that's very, you know, rocking or moving and and you tend to wiggle around in your chair a lot that's very distracting so get a chair that's going to keep you still and quiet um, it's okay to gesture with your hands and that sort of thing but you don't want to be just doing uh, extraneous movement that's going to distract from your message I didn't mention it in the video, but we do have two gamer chairs basically uh, for a couple of reasons number one they're comfortable and and that we spent a lot of time in these chairs and they can after a while almost every chair did get uncomfortable that we had tried prior to this so we invested in the gamer chairs they're very mobile they come this particular model comes with um skate wheels uh so they're very quiet and they're very easy to move around the room we have a a um what do you call it the faux wood floor uh, installed in here um to solve the green screen problem for shelly we did buy her a portable pop-up green screen. So she uses that when she's uh, recording from home and it works very nicely. They run in the 60 to $90 range, depending on which model you buy, uh, but they work. And uh, she, didn't, it, she didn't put additional lighting in her uh, room and she couldn't convince Kevin to paint the wall green. I don't understand it. I think every wall should have, every room should have. Well, there's green. a closet behind yeah, me, that's so true. it wouldn't make sense. So it worked out very uh, nicely for her. And um, we're very, you, you saw the lighting. We have the simplest lighting solution. It's on the wall. Uh, it provides plenty of light uh, and it's inexpensive. So and once it's up, we don't have to mess right. with it. We don't have to move it or yeah. anything like that. Uh, then your camera. Uh, we suggest avoiding using your laptop camera unless that is all you have and all you can afford. Uh, but we recommend the Logitech webcam, Logitech C920 or the C925 or the C922, 922 which is what we well. have. Yeah. Uh, that's 
in our kit. And the reason we recommend Logitech specifically is because we've tried off brands and they are never as good. They always have problems. They're not usually uh, user friendly plug and play like Logitech is. So um, I, I did want to mention that one of the important things to remember as you're doing this is the uh, Logitech cameras come with microphones and some people use them that way. And what you're going to get is a slight echo. We recommend using the app that will come with a camera to turn the microphones off. So they're disabled uh, and not use them, making sure that you're using your headset. Oh, I did want to mention when I gave you the nomenclature for the headset, I, I gave you the wrong nomenclature. I said BHPS. It's not. It's BPHS. One and the new model is the BPHS2. Um, let's see, desktop tripods. Oh, okay, so one of the things that you saw in ours, we don't have a tripod, we have a light stand that raises the camera to eye height for us. But there are uh, variables. If you can avoid connecting the camera to your desktop, uh, I recommend that. So if you can use like a light stand, you have space behind your desk to do that. And the reason is if you do, it picks up every motion as your desk moves, then your camera moves. Uh, or if it is in a very sturdy uh, 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 riser, whatever, whatever you're using, it it there's motion in it and you're trying to avoid that. So we, we put ours on a light stand uh, and we behind try not the desk. to kick it too much. Yeah, <laughs> and it does, but it does happen. Every once and in a while. as you can see in Jen's office, she put her laptop on a riser. So if you are going to use your laptop camera, it should be on a riser so that the camera is at your eye level, uh, um, and that you're looking directly at people when they see you on screen that mm -hmm. way. Uh, the lighting. You can start with a ring light like you saw in Jen's setup, or you can go with the uh, lights on the wall in sconces like we do. The lighting solution that we have is uh, two bulbs, came to about $30, and the two sconces came to about uh, $25 to $30. And then if uh, you just use the hardware that comes with the lamps and you plug them in. Uh, so you're going to have a lighting solution that's about $60. So it's really not that expensive if, uh, you know, you can just put them up on the wall and then leave them and plug them into whatever outlet you have. Uh, I have mine plugged into an outlet that I also have a switch connected to, so I can just flip them on and off and that makes it super easy. So if you do end up getting something like a ring light, uh, the ring light is, it, it has a funny design element to it. Uh, and the expectation is that you're going to put your smartphone in the middle of the ring light. Uh, it's, first of all, I don't think it's very flattering lighting. It's, it's pretty flat actually, but it also puts rings in your eyes. And if you're wearing glasses, then it puts the rings in the glasses. So I strongly recommend that for the light, you don't put the camera inside the light. You raise the, the light so that the bottom is at least at your head, the top of your head level. So it's higher than you. And then you angle it. You can see my hand here. You angle it downwards towards you. That avoids a couple of things. Number one, although it does put a catch light in your eye, it doesn't put that ring right in the center of your eye. And also you'll especially need it if you're wearing glasses. As you can see in our glasses, uh, we both have the non-reflective material, but that sometimes that doesn't cover the direct look. It'll cover not reflecting the uh, our monitors, for example. Uh, but if I look up, you'll be able to see that there's a reflection of the light up there. If that's right in front of you, it's going to reflect right into your glasses. So uh, the ring light is a good place to start if it's just you uh, in front of your desk. It produces plenty of light, and they usually come with a remote control that allows you to control the light from where you're uh, sitting. Just make sure it's higher than uh, than your head, basically. The bottom of the ring light is at about the the uh, top of your head and then angle downwards for you. That'll give you the best effect. Can you look at the comments? Uh, for the headphones, we recommend this very versatile headphone set. It's only about $30 on Amazon. It's called One Audio A71. It comes with different uh, connectors. So you can add the microphone or you can take it away, uh, depending on if you want that mic or not. And then you can, uh, use different kinds of plugs with it. Uh, you can plug it into a TRRS or 
you can get an adapter and have it plug into, uh, for instance, I plug, I can plug mine into my iPhone because I have an adapter for that with the one audio. So if I was on a phone call or listening to a Zoom call on my cell phone, I could just plug in that headset and it come and it makes it very versatile. So I want to address this, uh, Nikki. Um, I've corrected it and I've added that, but we're going to show you a link that you can use to find all of these materials. We have an Amazon store where you can find all of this. Um, unless, so one of the challenges of the BPH S1 is that they, um, and the two, uh, is A, they're expensive. They're comparatively expensive. B, they require an two uh, input outputs. They require an XLR and a quarter inch uh, phono. The XLR is used for the microphone. The quarter inch phono is used for the heads, headphone. So you'll have to get an extra thing in order to make them work. Rather than doing that, I strongly recommend what uh, Shelly is showing you on the screen right now. Uh, that is the One Audio A71. They run less than $40. They have a very good headset and a very good microphone to go with them. And you avoid a lot of the expense and add-ons that you'd have to have if you, um, if you, um, use the uh, BPH, BPHS one or two. And like I said, they are expensive. The one you, you can only find used, you can usually find them on eBay with open boxes, that kind of thing. The two runs around 350 bucks. Uh, the difference between the BPHS two and this one audio that Shelly is showing you is uh, just more than $300 difference because this one sells for less than 50. And so, I use it at home and it's, it's a really good. Yeah headset for what for the for the price it's a really great value uh, applications that you're going to want to have uh, to run your uh, live casting is your gmail account for communications um, and that also allows you to have a youtube account when you have set up a gmail account it has a connected youtube account for it so you have a live streaming platform and then uh you want a canva account you don't absolutely have to use canva but we found it is the best option for any kind of graphics that you want to make it comes with probably a million different templates uh by now uh, because people add templates all the time and they share their templates. So you can go in there and find a starter, right? Uh, if you want a thumbnail, you can go, I want a YouTube thumbnail and they'll show you a hundred different ones. And you can say, I, I like that one the best. And then you can just open that up and start adjusting it to what you want. So definitely we like Canva. It's a, it's a, you can use it for free or you can get the pro account for uh, $13 a month. And, uh, it's super helpful. And then the last thing on the list is our StreamYard account. Uh, you can start with StreamYard for free and check it out. It doesn't have all the features uh, opened up to you if you're using the free level. But if you go to the next level, you can use almost all the features that they offer. And it's going to allow you to multi-stream. That means you can uh, do what we're doing right now, which is to stream to Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube and Twitter all at the same time. So when you schedule, it puts up a social media uh, app, a social media ad or promo that's an event. And it says, you know, I'm going to be on, live on this time and this day. Look for me here so that people know that it's coming. And then they'll show up at that time and day. Uh, and, and it's really super great when, when you're using it on LinkedIn. I love it on LinkedIn because, uh, if you click on my, like when we schedule it and it pops up on LinkedIn and if you clicked on it, it would ask you if you wanted to attend and you could say yes. And then it would ask you, would you like to put this on your calendar? And it will send you an email to remind you. And it's really, really helpful, uh, when we put it on LinkedIn in that way. So these are definitely the applications you want to start with your Gmail, your YouTube, your Canva, and your StreamYard. And we do want to point out that we speak from experience with all of these. Not that we didn't have Gmail and YouTube accounts prior to this, but we recommend Canva to you after having tried several variations of that online uh, graphics builder theme. And Canva was literally the best solution that we could find. Um, Michelle mentioned that there are, uh, you know, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of templates. But the other thing it provides is, 
excuse me, is access to a, a very large library of photographs and videos that you can add to your uh, Canva documents. So that's very convenient because you'd otherwise have to pay for that. StreamYard, as Shelley said, has a, a free account. And over the years that we've been streaming together in a studio since 2017, um, we tried every possible variation from desktop to things like Zoom, uh, to the various options. And there are three or four, uh, probably more than that. We actually buy them all when they come out. We, we actually buy them from AppSumo just so that we can try them out and see what they're doing. We ended up on StreamYard uh, because it provided it more than enough for us to do what we wanted. Shelly mentioned one of the big features is right now we're streaming to uh, eight different platforms. And um, that makes our life uh, much easier. Uh, at the end of the show, we can download it. It saves the audio and a separate video. Uh, I'm sorry, the audio recording and a video recording of the program. So now we can upload it to our podcast platform. We can have it transcribed and we can have uh, uh, content for uh, Shelly's blogs and newsletters. So it provides a lot of features. And of course, you can see the graphics and, you know, we're sharing slides with you and things like that. And the nice thing about StreamYard, we've been using it for a year now? A little over a year. Yeah, a little over a year, is they continue to add to the technologies. They give us additional features at, at least once a month that we can use and that have been very helpful to, to us. So there are others out there and we don't, we don't, we're not critical of them. We're just saying StreamYard, in our experience, is the best solution at this point in time. We keep our eye out for anything else. We try everything else. And then sometime, maybe sometime in the future, there will be something that uh, comes along that's better. But so far, we haven't found it. All right. So next, we have what to save up for. So once you have your basic materials and equipment in place, work with that for a little while, but think about, you know, what else can I add that would make my life easier, that would make my streams look better. Um, so what we can save up for is a second monitor, the larger, the better. Oh, so much better when you do a slide presentation, especially to have a second monitor. So you can see the slides on one stream, screen and then you have your stream yard on the other screen. And it's just, much more organized and you don't have to flip back and forth between screens and get lost and close the wrong thing and really helpful. Uh, it doesn't have to be a fancy monitor just so it works. Wall mounted lighting, of course, that we talked about. Uh, that's what we have in here. Digital audio mixer. Uh, I'm going to let Toby talk more about that. We have a green screen here in the ha in the house. We have the green wall, as you can see from the picture or you saw in the video. We painted the wall green behind us. Um, because we knew we wanted that green screen feature, or you can get a pop-up green screen like I have in my house. And then you might want a second camera, especially if you're demonstrating things that you're doing with your hands. If you're cooking or if you're doing art or something like that, and you're demonstrating those sorts of things uh, or demonstrating small products, like if you want to be on Amazon Live and you want to show products on there, uh, a second camera can come in really handy. Uh, so that's something you can also save up for. So let me talk about the digital audio mixer. This is, uh, at the moment, one of the more expensive solutions you can invest in. It runs about $600, the Rodecaster Pro, but it is uh, digital. So uh, they are constantly, you can, about once a month, you get a download to improve uh, the options that you have available to you. Uh, and it is very comprehensive. It allows for three, I I'm sorry, four microphone inputs, uh, for headphone outputs. It has controls for each. Uh, it has a sound pad. So when Shelly says, uh, give me the air horn, I can do that. So it has, not only does it have eight sound pads on it, but there are eight variations. It, is, it has software that enables me to create up to eight different variations of the sound pad. So we have one for each of our shows, uh, depending on what we're doing. And it makes it very convenient. It uses sliders for audio management, audio level management. And it also has two ways to integrate your smartphone. So you can plug your smartphone into it, 
or you can use a, your Bluetooth connection to uh, plug your smartphone into it. And that way, if you do a show that requires calling in or out or both, uh, it's a very simple connection and, and it does something you'll hear it referred to as mix minus. Uh, so it knows what's coming in and what's going out and it doesn't confuse the two. And that requires extra equipment in any other situation. Uh, if you're in any other kind of studio, you will have extra equipment to handle inbound versus outbound telephone calls. So they thought of everything when you came uh, when that comes to this product. There is a competitor. Zoom has the P8. It, it, it's a competitor. It's in about the same price range, and it has about the same features. So if you're a Zoom fan rather than a Rode fan, uh, you can uh, get that and, and get uh, the same features out of it. It has pretty much the same thing with the number of sound pads and whether or not you can integrate your phone. But being able to, you know, the, the feature of just being able to integrate your phone cleanly, your, your cell phone cleanly, is was unthinkable four years ago. You had to buy extra equipment to do that, and it was expensive extra equipment. So I strongly recommend it. Um, one of the other things I wanted to mention is um, you can... So if you want a second monitor, you have to make sure if you're using a laptop that it has an HDMI output. Most of the contemporary lap laptops do. It's not a big problem. Just check and make sure. Sometimes uh, you have three options when it comes to HDMI input and output. Make sure that you get the cable that matches with one end on your laptop and the other end on your monitor. Check that before you buy the cable because a lot of times you'll get a a, a, a digital HDMI cable and it doesn't fit your, your monitor or your laptop. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, if you have a DSLR camera and you like that look of the bokeh in the background, you don't have a green screen, but you like that look, you can integrate it. It is more difficult to do, will require a second USB port to do that, and it'll require some kind of interface. The, the most most computers handle the integration well. A lot of them don't, and you'll see uh, the ones that don't because they won't be able to sync the audio and the video signals when it comes from the DSLR, uh, primarily for two reasons. Number one, the DSLR is putting out a massive amount of digital bits and bytes uh, because that's how it works. It's an HDMI level piece of equipment. And number two, Usually it requires some sort of interface. There are hardware interfaces that fit on the cable and there are software interfaces. In either case, that hardware or software interface builds a slight delay into the video signal. So you can't always get them synced correctly. There are more expensive solutions where the video signal and your headphone signal are integrated in a single box and it uses software to work out uh, the sync issues. But again, it's an additional expense, um, but they do look good. Got to say that for them. Yeah, they're just <coughs> a lot of work. If you're not a techie person, don't, don't go that route. Yeah, we've never had anybody complain to us and say your webcam isn't uh, doesn't make you very, look very good. As a matter of fact, our biggest... The other thing too, I'm going to tell you, is we did try, as, matter, as always, we've tried all these solutions. We did try the DSLR solution, and I'm not a very pretty person. Shelly has the benefit of being a pretty person. I'm not, and that DSLR exacerbated every nook and cranny on my face. So yeah, it does that. It's. Uh, I it, think I've I've heard other women and people complain about it yeah, as well when it's they too good. try the DSLR and they yeah. go, "Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not." Very happy with that. <laughs> so, especially, especially if you haven't invested oh. in some good lighting. What? What? Oh. oh, that 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 link we could that link works, but uh, we have a different link that's easier. Okay, I didn't write I the different link down. Yeah. So uh, we have all of our equipment uh, in the home studio kit. You can find at studio.agkmedia.studio. Or if you just want to see all the equipment that we recommend and use, uh, you can go to store.videotarot.com. Uh, and this is basically a place on Amazon where we have idea kits. And you can purchase anything from the kits. It will not cost you any extra, but we do get a small commission for uh, directing you to Amazon. So that's, uh, that's something that you can do, and it's going to show you the exact uh, equipment that we recommend and that we use. Can I take them there? Mm -hmm. So this is studio.agkmedia.com.
studio. And as you can see, it has all the equipment that we've been talking about in here. We change it regularly as new uh, technologies become available to it. We have added our desks in here, uh, but you can usually find them at a Home Depot if you can't if you don't want to order them in, uh, from uh, Amazon. But everything in here is everything that we use. So you can go to studio.agkmedia.studio. Is that Jim making comments? Uh, Maybe. I think so. <laughs> That's not me. Hi, Jen. <laughs> I think Jen might be watching on her phone. OK. OK, what's next? Uh, let's see. I need to go back and say uh, the arrow. Got it. Down here. There we go. OK, and that was it for our slide presentation for today. So why don't you go ahead and close the slides. And we'll move into, uh, we talked about where to find our store. Another great place to go is womenconquerbusiness.com and then go to the tools page. And if Toby will open that up for us and we'll take another look at it. Uh, when you go to womenconquerbiz or womenconquerbiz.com, then you uh, will get all those options at the top. And one of the links, one of the uh, top navigation bars is tools. And you go down the list and Jen's got all of her favorite tools and tech listed. So um, anything that you have a question about, should I use this or that, which one's better? You can find out what Jen uses and Jen has exhaustively uh, tested all of these. So she knows what works well for a small business owner and she's put it in here and it also shows you her uh, office setup so if you wanted to see that picture again it's there and womenconquerbiz.com on her tools page there we go yeah nice easy setup for her all right so let's move into tweak of the week tweak of the week would you go down mm -hmm. so i can see it all right Abe Books. So Toby has a tweak of the week for us today. He's going to tell us about Abe Books. So um, I am a bookaholic, uh, <laughs> although I do a lot of reading via, or re I guess, listening via Audible. Uh, I still occasionally want to own a book. And a lot of times, as a matter of fact, I just found a book on there that's way out of print, but I can find it on Abe Books. Eight Books is a marketplace of book vendors. Uh, so all you have to do is, uh, as you can see here, I'll zoom it in so you can see it a little bit, enter the author or the title or the keyword in I ISBN, and it finds a vendor or vendors um, uh, of the books that you're looking for. Uh, they do sell new books, but the majority of them are there because they sell, they have large collections of used books. The only thing that you have to be careful of is sometimes when you're going through that list, you don't notice that the vendors in the UK or Germany or Pakistan, I get one vendor in Pakistan regularly, uh, but it's a great place to find any book that you're looking for if you like the idea of having the book uh, in your hand versus Audible. And as I said, most of my reading, quote, reading, unquote, now comes via Audible because I use it in the car and when I'm working out and things like that. Uh, but if you want that hardbound feel, this is a good place to do it. And I found that their pricing is fair uh, and they price it based upon the book condition, whether or not it's a first edition. They make all the same things that if you went into any good used bookseller, they would say that one is more expensive than well, that copy of the book is more expensive than that one because it's it's uh, uh, you know in better condition, or it's a first edition, or it's signed, and you can check off all those things. So if you're looking for a first edition, or you'd like a signed copy, or you'd like one that's in you know mint condition with the cover and things like that, you can state all of that, and it will present you uh, options for you. So Abe Books, A B E Books dot com. All right, uh, now it's time for our inspirational nugget. <laughs> That's a nugget, isn't it? May is Stroke Awareness Month. So um, uh, my mom had just had a stroke at the end of March. And we've learned a lot. We've learned uh, what 
you know, you can do to prevent, what you can do to recover, uh, signs and symptoms that you need to be on the lookout for. And we've learned what it's like to have somebody in your family who is a victim of stroke and who is recovering from that. It is exhausting for everybody. It's very emotional and it's very difficult, but there are um, support groups out there and there's a lot of resources. So make yourself aware. And it's amazing how many people have somebody in their family or they themselves have suffered a stroke. And, you know, we, we hear about it, um, but we don't know about it until we experience it with ourselves or somebody in our family. Um, but educate yourselves, understand the signs and symptoms, understand how to take care of yourself. So, uh, I'll have to tell you that it really gave me a brand new appreciation for being able to get up out of bed and walk to the bathroom and use the bathroom and take a shower and brush my teeth and have two hands that work and be able to express myself with the words that I choose and, and how hard it is when you don't have that. Mm. It, uh, it is, it, it is and can be very difficult. And we've seen that uh, in uh, Shelly going out to care for her mother, where, as she said, she realized that the things that you expect to be your normal facilities uh, after you have a stroke, literally you, you lose control of the left side of your body, or in some cases, the right side. This was, in, in Shelly's mom's case, it was the left side. And again, you don't realize how important those faculties are to you until you can't use them anymore. And, and the other thing uh, we noticed about Shelly's mom is it changed her outlook on life. Like mm -hmm. she started thinking, this is the end of my life, et cetera, et cetera. It's not. Is it going to be more difficult? Yes. We had, uh, last night we were talking about it on one of our other shows, and we had several people in the program said, yeah, I had mine when I was 55, or I had mine when I was 60. That's very well, my young. My dad had one, and I, you know, and I helped him through that, or yeah. somebody close to them that yeah. had one, and they understand. Right. But it's so common, and we just need to understand how to take better care of ourselves, and I want all of you to take really good care of yourself, and... Um, I don't want that, that to happen to anybody else. Well, and and Shelly was, we would speak every night at the end of the day as she was helping with her mom. And I'm seven, there's only seven years difference between me and her mom. And although I do a good job of trying to take care of myself, take my medication, things like that, I decided, you know what, I'm going to lose this weight that I've been trying to lose for, I don't know, 20 years. I don't know. <laughs> it's been a long time, but I'm getting serious about it and uh, getting better uh, because she, uh, Shelly's mom has the benefit of having her husband at home. She has family around. Am I, I'm, I live alone. If this happens to me, I go into a home. It's what it boils down to because I'm certainly not going to do this to my children. And I'm at the possible age. So um, the important thing to, for you to do is to make sure you take care of yourself and uh, eat well, get lots of sleep, which is not a good thing for me, uh, and, uh, and exercise, exercise. Mm -hmm. and exercise. All of those and, things that everybody tells you all the time, start doing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't just say, I know, I know, I should. Just do it. Just take one step a day. Uh, start going on a short walk every day. If you're not walking at all, just do a short walk, you know, five minutes. My brother goes on two walks a day, even when he's traveling for work, he goes and walks or he uses the treadmill in the hotel. And, you know, we keep each other accountable. Uh, find yourself an accountability partner, whether that's your spouse, uh, a sibling, a parent, a child, find yourself an accountability partner and get to work on uh, a healthy diet and exercise and gain plenty of sleep and take care of yourself. And it is, uh, as Shelly mentioned, Stroke Awareness Month, uh, the month of May. And so there's extra, uh, 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 extra e effort for the search engines to put in uh, when you put in stroke symptoms or, or conditions or preventiveness, et cetera, you can put that in there and it'll give you some information that's worthwhile. And I noticed there's lots of YouTube videos on it as well. Uh, and the CDC has a whole section dedicated to uh, stroke awareness. So yeah. uh, there's plenty of information. You don't have any excuse for not knowing about it and do yourself the favor of not waiting until it happens to you or someone close to you 
get the information now so you can do as much as you can from a preventive perspective and then know what to do when it does happen. And I think uh, Shelly's by nature a generous person and her uh, deciding to move to Arizona for uh, at least two months is an indication of the kind of generosity that uh, we experience. And we're going to set up a studio for her in her mom's house. That's and, right. You know, I'll still be here, but I'll well, be there too. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, for this programming for Women Conquer Business and for the programming that Shelly and I do together, uh, she'll still be around. We'll just be in separate locations. And we've done that before. There's been weather situations where she's at home and I'm here. And uh, we still do the show. I mean, the, right. the technology it's is all readily possible. available. That's right. <clears throat> well, we thank you all for being here today to uh, participate in Women Conquer Business. And uh, we're very gr grateful for Toby being here today to uh, fill in for Jen while she's on vacation. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Jen will be here. And uh, we'll have another con uh, episode about content creation and why that is something that you need to do for your business. And Jen will be back. Next and Jen week. will be back. Yeah. So thank you for being here and we'll see you next week. So I do want to say thank you to Jen uh, for asking me to sh share this uh, time with Shelly. Uh, I hope it did a credible job. I know I'm not exactly a complete fill in for you, mm -hmm. uh, but I really enjoyed uh, being on the show and, uh, and talking with your audience. So thanks for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Got a question? What? Oh, the red video. Oh, okay. Go. Ready? Okay. Bye now. Thank you for joining the Women Conquer Business Podcast, hosted by Shelley Carney and Jen McFarland. Please subscribe and leave a comment or question regarding your most challenging content creation or business problem. Then share this podcast with family and friends so they can find the support they need to expand their brand and share their message with the world. Check the show notes for links to valuable resources and come back again next week.